Section 5.2, free body diagrams. In this section, we want to be able to construct a free body diagram of a rigid body. In the previous section, we learned what the necessary and sufficient conditions were to establish that a rigid body was indeed in equilibrium. And that meant that we had to take the sum of all the forces that it was subjected to, add it up to get our resultant force, and ensure that it did equal to 0i plus 0j plus 0k. If that was satisfied, that means that the rigid body was not translating in any of these directions. And it was also required that the moment about any point due to the forces as well as applied moments will result in a moment vector and it too had to have components that was 0i plus 0j plus 0k and that ensured that the rigid body was not rotating. To get to this point or to be able to do this, the very first thing we need to be able to do is free this, let's say this lever from its support and identify all the forces and moment that it's subjected to. So in essence, what that entails is taking this lever, freeing it from the support to get something that looks like this. So from here, what we have to do is identify all the forces and moments it, it is subjected to. So before we get to that analysis, what we have to do is learn about the effects of supports on rigid bodies. So let's do that first. Let's look at several supports for rigid bodies and we'll limit it to two dimensional systems. Let's look at connections or supports. So we'll look at the reactions due to those supports. So let's consider the first one. We have a bar that's supported by a cable which is adhered to the ground. What we do is we free it from the support which would be the cable on the ground. So we would simply have the rod or the bar and the force that the cable exerts onto the rod would be defined by that vector and we should also specify the angle because forces are defined by the magnitude and the angle. And what's neat about the cables is that you always know the direction. The reaction force will always be in line with that cable. Number two, let's look at a, uh, a weightless link, a weightless link. And suppose we have a system here, a support where a weightless linkage is connected to it and along with another bar that's connected to it, and we don't know what that is on that end, and it's pinned. So what we wanna do is draw the free body diagram of this weightless link right there. So we free it from the support, just like that. And for a weightless link with two joints like this, the force, the reaction force, will always be along that bar. So we'll have a unknown force in that direction. And it's specified at a specific angle. And we don't know whether the force, this reaction force, is going into this rod or maybe it's pulling on it, all right? So both of these free body diagrams are acceptable.
Okay, number three. Suppose I have an inclined surface and there's this roller and it looks like this. These are rollers on it and there's some kind of linkage attached to it. And this is a ground. So what we want to do is be able to free this linkage from the support so we get something like this, like that. And what this roller does is it prevents translation in this direction. Therefore, the reaction would actually be perpendicular to that incline. So I'll just sketch that incline right there. So the reaction force would be perpendicular to that. All right, so this is perpendicular and that would be my reaction force. Number four. Suppose I have, an, an again, an inclined surface and I have a rocker. It looks something like that. And there is a linkage attached to it. And what we want to do is draw the free body diagram of this linkage. So I free it from the rocker and I get something like this. And what that rocker again does for this linkage is that it resists motion perpendicular to this inclined surface. So therefore the reaction force is perpendicular to that inclined surface. So that would be my free body diagram where this is 90 degrees. The next support would be a smooth contacting surface on an incline. So let's say that's my incline and suppose I have a linkage like that, which is very smooth. This ground acts as a support for this linkage. So to draw the free body diagram of this linkage, I remove the ground and I simply get something like that. And what this ground does is it prevents this linkage from moving perpendicular into the direction of the ground. Therefore, my reaction force would be perpendicular to that ground. So I've just sketched it right here just so you can see it. And that would be 90 degrees, and that would be my reaction force. Next, let's look at um, a roller or pin which is confined in a smooth slot. So it might be something like this where I have a slot, right? Something like that. And I have a roller in there. So it might glide in this channel. And it is connected to a linkage. So this channel is a support this wheel also acts as a support for this linkage. So I'm going to free this linkage from its support and I would get something like this. In this case, what happens is that we have to assume that it's not a real tight fit, that once this roller is riding against this edge, there is some space between this side of the channel such that there would be no force there. Only force on this side would exist. Therefore, if that's the case, then this support prevents this wheel from translating perpendicular to this inside channel. So my reaction force would be perpendicular to it. Right. The seventh one is something like this, where we have some kind of rod 
and we have a collar so I'll just draw it a little large like this all right so we have a collar that slides on that rod and that collar is attached to a linkage like that so this collar allows this linkage to freely translate in this direction freely rotate clockwise or counterclockwise but what the rod does is that it prevents the collar from translating in the perpendicular direction to this rod therefore if I were to draw the free body diagram there would be a reaction force from the collar to the rod because translation perpendicular to the rod is limited so I would have this reaction force like that in both of these cases for six and seven it's okay to assume also that the reaction force could be going this way so that would be F or F both are correct and even here we don't know whether it's the reaction force is going into the rod or pulling on the rod so it's just a guess right now so both are acceptable so let's continue on our support slash connection uh, column is shown right here and Let's see, now we have a pin assembly, right? So this is called a smooth pin or hinge. And a linkage is attached to it like that. And we're given that it's an angle of theta like that. So that's known. So I know that this pin prevents this linkage from translating in the X direction as well as the Y direction. So my reaction force, once I free that linkage from its support, will have a reaction force in the X and a reaction force in the Y. And of course, we know this theta that's given. Or we can actually just uh, write it as a resultant. So we would have that same linkage, and we can have a resultant of it. Okay. Note that the resultant force does not need to go through the linkage. Okay, so resultant force does not need to go through the linkage. Okay, number nine. Suppose we have this collar and we have, suppose we have this rod and we have a collar that looks something like this. But in this case, it's actually very rigid. It's, this is part of it. So this is one complete assembly right here that slides on this rod. And this rod actually prevents this assembly from translating in the direction perpendicular to the rod. So if I were to free this assembly from its support, I would get something like this. And the reaction force on it would be perpendicular to 
this rod. So I'll just draw a construction line. The reaction force would be in the direction, just like that. And this is perpendicular to the rod. It's not in line with this, or it doesn't have to be in line with this rod. The only requirement is that it's perpendicular to the supporting rod. Now we also note that this rod prevents this assembly from rotating. Therefore, there will be a reaction moment. So I'll have to draw the reaction moment right there. So we don't know the direction of this reaction force and this reaction moment on this freed body. So it would have also been correct to actually draw the free body diagram like this, where the reaction force is going the other way and the moment vector is going also in the opposite direction. So both of these would have been correct. I also want to point out that if we had a similar collar assembly, but the body is actually maybe curved like this, and we were to free this body from the supporting rod, we would get something like this. The reaction force will be perpendicular to this rod because this rod prevents this rigid body from translating in this direction. So there will be a reaction force that's perpendicular to that rod. And also, the rod prevents rotation of this rigid body. Therefore, there will be a reaction moment such as that. And again, just like how it was before, we don't know what direction the force or the moment is, so it would have been correct also to draw the free body diagram like this, where it's going in the other direction, and this is 90 degrees right there, and the moment vector is also going in the opposite direction. Number 10, suppose you have a wall and you have a beam that's fixed to the wall. This wall acts as a supporting structure for this beam. So I want to analyze the beam, so I free it from the supporting structure. So I get this beam like this. Now this wall prevents this beam from translating in the x direction, so I would have a reaction force in the x direction. This wall also prevents this beam from translating in the y direction, therefore I would have a reaction force in the y. In addition, the wall prevents this beam from rotating, Therefore, I would have a reaction moment like that. And again, it doesn't matter, again, it doesn't matter which direction we have these reaction forces going as well as the moment. So we could have written or we could have drawn our free body diagram like this, where this is my Fx. Fy and my reaction moment. So let's do an example where we draw the free body diagram of this lever right here. So this is what we're interested in, this lever right here. It's supported by this pin assembly, a pin right here which is connected to a spring and another pin right there which is connected to this uh, rod and a force is being applied uh, at the end. 
So the free body diagram for this would look something like this. I'm going to idealize it. So I'll just draw that and that. So what I've done is I've freed it. I've removed this support. I removed this structure and that structure and all I'm left with is just the lever. So this force I have to draw. So that'll be the force. This is a pin support and that rod is connected by two points. Therefore, the reaction force will always be in line with that rod. So I'm going to assume that it's pulling it. You can assume that it's uh, pushing on it too. It doesn't matter. So right there, that's this one, that's a spring. I'm going to assume that the spring is pulling on it. So I just draw the effects of the force. That'll be F2. And this pin support prevents this lever from translating in the X. So let me draw my coordinate system, X, Y. It prevents it from translating in the X and it prevents it from translating in the Y. Therefore, I'm going to have a reaction in the Y and I will also have reaction in the X. So that's my free body diagram. So here we have a system it's consisting of this rod. There's a roller support here that rides on this incline, which is at 30 degrees. It's supported by a pin assembly right here, subjected to 750 pounds. If you're one of the first students who can draw the free body diagram of this assembly and email it to me, I'll give you one point towards a quiz. Let's do another example problem. Here we have an assembly where it's pin connected at A. There's a uh, moment applied at this right end, and there's also a distributed loading and also a point loading at B. So in order for us to draw the free body diagram of this assembly right here, we have to free it from its pin support. So I'm going to idealize that by just drawing something like this. Okay, and this is point A. So the free body diagram uh, would have to show this externally applied force here. So that would be NB. And the pin right here, this pin support prevents this assembly from translating in the X direction. So I'm going to have a reaction force. We'll call this AX. And you can put it also going to the left. This pin support also prevents this assembly from translating in the Y direction. Therefore, I'm going to have a reaction force in the Y. Again, you can choose it to go downward if you'd like. I have to draw the equivalent force for this distributed loading. And I know that's going to occur at uh, two thirds from here and one third from here. So I'll have a force right there. And if I take the area of this, I would have a force of 60 Newtons. And this applied moment, I'm just going to transfer down. So that's the free body diagram of the system.